So th thank you very much. So I'm, I'm happy that Tomasz is the chairman, so he has absolutely no problem with the pronunciation of my name. So uh, we are at the same university. I'm uh, in, at a different department, the Department of Physics of Complex Systems. And this project is done in collaboration with uh, Miklos. You, you know him, he, he sits there. Gabor Toth, he's a lazy PhD student of mine. And uh, Professor Jason Gallas, uh, he recently retired uh, from the University of Porto Alegre, Brazil. And the subject is uh, originally the kinetic energy balance empirical studies in uh, 2D ocean fields. And then uh, I would say that this is a kind of side result, which I would like to present today. Branko yesterday pointed out that uh, contents is a must. So I inserted this slide with a random illustration. So it's a, it's a beautiful uh, mesoscale eddy illustration. And the credit is uh, for a group uh, at uh, Ocean University of China. Uh, actually, I'm probably a beginner, but I never heard about that. So I checked at the Wikipedia. It operates uh, from the 60s, and uh, recently the number of staff is, is 3,400, and the number of students is around 25,000. So it's very impressive. So we should check the future results, what comes out. So this is the short outline of the talk. After introduction, uh, I will shortly address two questions. What are vortices, and what is the shape of vortices? And uh, I will talk about Gaussian vortices as a minimal model of uh, the shape of uh, geostrophic vortices and then the super vortex description. And uh, two tests uh, I shortly will uh, present with uh, very short conclusions. So at any time, please uh, uh, um, uh, pose any questions, and uh, I would be happy for uh, any, any critical remarks as well. So this is uh, a brief history of the mesoscale, and uh, I borrowed uh, this uh, short list uh, from the paper there. It appeared last year. Actually, the title of that, so it's a, it's a review paper of the role of sub-mesoscale processes. But there is a beautiful box uh, on the history of mesoscale. So, so these are the main steps. Up to the middle of the last century, the big picture was this uh, huge uh, oceanic gyrus, gyroscale currents, and uh, small-scale turbulence. And uh, in the end of the 50s, the first observations uh, appeared uh, where this swallow experiment uh, used uh, a few dozens of neutrally buoyant floats and uh, they follow the uh, trajectories uh, that uh, could be uh, really tiresome because at that time GPS and uh, some valuable of stuff was not available. And they recognize the pattern of uh, some uh, um, vortices of uh, size of 50 to uh, 100 kilometer uh, characteristically, but that was uh, not entirely established until this uh, uh, first milestone exper experiment in 1973, uh, led by Stommel, this mid-ocean dynamics experiment, and they used uh, hundreds of boys, and they clearly recognized the presence uh, as, a, as a major pattern on the surface of the ocean. And then in uh, 1974, Adrian Gill, uh, wrote a seminal paper and uh, later the textbook where uh, he recognized that the baroclinic instability is uh, um, the major, uh, uh, the, the, the major uh, cause behind uh, the generation of uh, these mesoscale eddies and uh, everything uh, is uh, um, uh, everything can be described by this uh, Rosby deformation scale, Rosby deformation radius, which has the characteristic, uh, uh, characteristic, oh, sorry, characteristic scale in the ocean of uh, uh, 100, uh, 100 kilometer uh, in uh, mid-latitude uh, uh, locations. 
And then from the end of the 70s, the regular satellite observations started and uh, uh, the available open databases, the Aviso, everybody uses that, uh, also we, and then the, the, the picture emerged that actually the mesoscale eddies, the major patterns on the surface of the oceans, and uh, they are representing the weather of the, of the ocean. So what is the, wh what is the vortex? Uh, so I cite here this uh, very nice fundamental paper from uh, George from, from 2005. Um, there are several methods. So, uh, fortunately, I, I needn't uh, give any, any detail because most of the audience uh, knows much more about this stuff than me. Uh, so I will concentrate on uh, the methods of uh, detection, automated detection of uh, large databases like the Aviso. There are two major classes, of course, the Eulerian. These are the classical, traditional. They're mostly based on detecting closed contours. So the most common is the sea level anomaly close contours. And uh, we heard about also here, Okubo Weiss parameter contours. There are methods based on wavelets, several methods, and uh, also geometry of velocity vectors and uh, several variants of them. So there are a couple of papers uh, dedicated to a critical comparison of these methodology. This is one example here. And it uh, shows uh, that it compares uh, three major uh, methods with different filtering inputs. And then uh, these are the conclusion. So none of the Eulerian methods is superior. So there is no ultimate eddy detection methodology. So you see here that the discrepancy between the number of identified eddies can be really huge. So uh, in the bottom line, uh, so this method, this Okubo Weiss uh, contour method, identify less than 100, uh, le le less than 100 uh, eddies per day. Uh, act actually, this is, this is a much higher temporal resolution, uh, while a factor of two and two and a half um, um, is characteristic for other methods with many false positive detection. So the other class of the methods is uh, the Lagrangian family. The, the Lagrangian methodology is much better founded mathematically. We know well. Uh, so here I, I quote one paper. It's also a, a critical comparison test. Uh, uh, so uh, Hajig uh, Hashem, uh, sorry for the pronunciation, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's close enough. So the last author is also George, who I <laughs> wouldn't say. So the, uh, this is a comparison of 12 uh, Lagrangian-based methodology. And uh, the, the major conclusion is this is only one test. So it's a Brickley jet uh, test, but there are two others in the paper. It's a two-dimensional turbulence. And uh, the third one, what, what was the third one? Oh, yeah, OK. And, and then the, the conclusion is, again, that none of the Lagrangian methods is superior to the others. Please comment that if. <laughs> OK, but, uh, so one reading is that some of, the, some of the methods are working good for jets. Some other methods are optimal for, for eddies. Uh, some, I, I, I don't know, OK. but. Uh, Okay, so I, I dared to, uh, sorry, I dared to formulate this, uh, oops, this, uh, this statement because uh, uh, th this is a very nice picture uh, from this PNES uh, paper. And uh, if I remember well, this is the Agulhas current uh, eddies and in a Lagrangian picture. And uh, these four, so the colored, colored, one, colored ones are identified as perfect. Eddies. So the, the, these are really material holding uh, lines around. Uh, so and uh, 
Along the trajectories, there is uh, no loss of the material closed inside such perfect eddies. Uh, but uh, my remark is that uh, from an operational point of view, so for example, when the question is the estimate of uh, volume, transfer, volume transport of water closed in, in eddies, uh, also I guess that uh, uh, oceanographists agree that is leaky vortices also transport a huge amount. So, so therefore, I, I don't know what is the compromise, the good compromise. So weakly, leaky vortices are also vortices. Where, when, so it, it depends on the question. So certainly mathematically, these are the perfect vortices. But also, for me, these are also vortices. So the, ah, uh, sorry. The pink one or this one? Yeah, yeah okay. Okay, why do you think they're vortices? Besides the lines that go around it? Nothing. Nothing, yeah, okay. No, but this is the end of a uh, uh, Lagrangian analysis, yes? Yes. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much for this comment. So, uh, okay, here are uh, some, pra um, particularly two answers to the question, what is a vortex? So from, uh, from two papers here, and uh, these are the formulation. It's uh, pretty complicated, not to mention the mathematics behind. Uh, here I would like to show you that uh, some very nice vortices can be easily produced in a laboratory. So these are experiments. It's a simply magnetic mixer. Everybody using a chemical laboratory. Here is uh, an overview that uh, it's a big tank and uh, this is the rotating uh, um, steerer bar. And then uh, 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 a beautiful vortex is uh, forming and then if you inject some dye, 
then these die will indicate uh, surprising stability. Uh, so, so these vortex uh, leaves uh, uh, sometimes uh, for two minutes, uh, three minutes, and uh, this bottom, bottom mixing destroys at the end. And uh, then uh, these uh, surfaces, these curtains of uh, dye, we can identify as uh, material holding surfaces. Indeed, uh, there is no observable perpendicular transport. Uh, between the internal part of the vortex and, uh, and the external part of the, of the fluid volume. So he, here are some uh, recent uh, uh, publications. Okay, so the next question, what is the shape of a mesoscale eddy? So mesoscale eddies, uh, so this is a recent uh, survey of ocean eddies, and then uh, these are traditional uh, identification algorithm, so um, uh, close contour uh, algorithm, and then uh, the <coughs> remarkable feature that there are practically no circular eddies. So the, uh, the most effective uh, fits are, however, there are changes around, but the most effective uh, fits are always uh, um, uh, elliptic, uh, ha have elliptic shapes. Uh, Yes, yes indeed. Uh, um, I have no idea, so this is, this is a snapshot for, for, from, from that paper, and uh, it might be the, the reason that uh, probably these, uh, these vortices are advected, so these are not, uh, not close to the uh, origin uh, of uh, their birth. Yeah. yeah. So in this paper, uh, you can find the statistics on uh, millions of eddies. Uh, fortunately, uh, for, fortunately, the elongation of these uh, ellipses are not, uh, not very big, uh, so it's moderate. So uh, one, can, one can transform them, scale them uh, back uh, to be a circular one and uh, try to estimate the, the vertical uh, shape of, uh, of these vortices. And uh, uh, th this is a Charlton type analysis, so it's a close contour sea level anomaly. From yes, from, uh, from Aviso. Uh, Aviso. Yes, the sign of the the sign of the. So the dotted, the dotted line actually is the identified, oh sorry, identified close contours. Here, you see here, and, uh, and this is the best fit ellipses. So the smooth, the smooth boundaries are fitted ellipses, but the, but the real close contour, sometimes you see here that the deviation is really marked. So it's a distorted. Uh, this is a snapshot, yes. And I evaluated millions of um, millions of these frames. So it's basically their imagination. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. How about the vertical cross sections? The first review uh, appeared in uh, in 2011. Also, it's the Charlton Group. And you see here, uh, this is a summary of plot. Uh, so it's an aggregated, scaled uh, uh, cross-section of uh, uh, one and the, 
um, uh, more, th more than one million observations uh, at the shapes, and then you see here two competing fits. Uh, one is these, uh, this lash line is a, is a Gaussian, and uh, it apparently fits uh, uh, to the majority, and this other one, is, uh, this other dash line, is a parabolic. This, uh, this, would, um, um, this would be a Rankine vortex. So Rankine vortex has a, has a core which has a, which has a parabolic shape, and they obtained that uh, um, the overwhelming majority of the vortices can be fitted with this, with this Gaussian uh, shape. And uh, uh, this is in agreement with uh, a later study by Wang et al. In, in 2015, they evaluated 5 million observations. And uh, uh, what they obtained is that uh, the, the characteristic was the pure Gaussian. Here you see an aggregated plot. And, uh, uh, and the other one was um, uh, just uh, the convolution of two Gaussian peaks. Uh, so it's uh, on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, but it depends on the interpretation because uh, uh, one can understand this shape also as a Gaussian over a tilted bottom. And then uh, he, here is the statistics. What they, what they found is the, is the Gaussian is over, over uh, 60, almost 70 percent, depending on the amplitude. Uh, over 70 persons can be fitted by the Gaussian. And then uh, this, is, this is the quadratic, uh, so, so that is, uh, uh, that is the, uh, a few percent only, which is a ranking vortex. And then uh, this is the composite. Uh, uh, this one is the middle. So it's more or less a Gaussian. So what does it mean, a Gaussian vortex? This is very, very nice because uh, uh, the most elementary or uh, most uh, transparent model of, uh, of a Gaussian vortex can be formulated by a few equations. Uh, so you see here one given parameterization. So this is, this is the uh, amplitude. Uh, actually here, the radius, this parameter R, uh, was chosen to be 10 kilometer, and uh, the peak amplitude is one meter. And then uh, um, when we assume a geostrophic uh, equilibrium, then we can directly compute from, uh, from this the uh, gradient. Oh, yes, uh, but yes, because the, this, this velocity is uh, the, uh, so the pressure, the, the pressure, pressure gradient is determined by the height. Yes, here, here it is. It's geostrophic balance. Yeah, it's an approximation, but this, this is the pure asymptotic mathematical model of that. And then here, here is the vorticity and it is sometimes called as a shielded Gaussian vortex because, as you see here, that around the core vorticity, there is a ring of opposite vorticity. But this does not mean that uh, the direction of the rotation changes. It's just, uh, just this, uh, um, uh, this uh, opposite vorticity arises as a consequence of a decaying shear. The interesting fact is uh, that some observations, uh, um, some three, 300,000 observations in, the, in this paper, Amoris, and uh, are really observed this uh, uh, opposite rotating ring around, because here is the, uh, here is the uh, tangential speed, and, and the tangential speed has the opposite side around the core. So this is really a uh, the perfect shielded uh, vortex, uh, but uh, um, in the following we are using the simplest, simplest picture of, of, this, uh, of this Gaussian vortex. Can I make two quick comments? Yes. It's 
just got a quick email to say that uh, that that's actually on the very full potential participants. We need the potential participants to issue a debt debt to no investment committee. And so the showing the working group is not really relevant to any kind of discussion about the stability or anything else. In other words, I'm seeing the four justices. Just a comment. Okay, thank you. A very appealing property of this uh, Gaussian vortex is that when we define the kinetic energy in this way and the entropy as a square of the of, of the vorticity of the of the vertical vorticity, um, the density is neglected here. It is also a quadratic function of the of the peak amplitude and the appealing property that all of these quantities uh, have a finite value of uh, integration uh, over an infinite domain. So these are well known formula and uh, actually th this is a classroom exercise uh, also uh, at our master courses. So these are very simple uh, closed formula. So over infinite domain, one single isolated uh, Gaussian vortex. And then uh, it is easy to recognize that uh, when uh, you calculate the, the ratio of this kinetic energy integral and the entropy integral, uh, then the ratio is an extremely simple formula. It is R squared over 2. So this uh, these ratio defines an, uh, an effective uh, size uh, of, a, of a vortex. And uh, uh, a second remark is that the kinetic energy integral depends only uh, on the peak amplitude of, uh, of a Gaussian uh, vortex. And uh, uh, this, uh, this is related to, to uh, some scaling uh, properties or some similarity of the, of the velocity field. So here is the data analysis, the first one I, I mentioned. Uh, this is done in a data bank. Uh, <clears throat> and it contains uh, a slice in the California current system depicted on this, uh, on this map. Uh, it is a relatively a small area, but uh, it's an extremely uh, detailed um, uh, studies are um, running there for, uh, for decades. Uh, so we know very much. So this, this California current system has a very strong seasonality. So um, uh, comparing the, the winter period and uh, the, uh, uh, the summer period, the spring and summer period, for example, this branch of the current changes sign. So some, some are, so, uh, some, some in the winter period, it, uh, it flows in the opposite direction. And in the summer period, so in the spring summer period, uh, the, the major current direction is uh, from north to, north to south. So here is uh, one snapshot of uh, the sea level uh, anomaly. And here are some uh, details about the data set. So it is uh, around 8,000 days, and the spatial resolution is uh, one quarter of uh, uh, geographic degrees. Here is just another uh, snapshot. Uh, or what is color coded here is the is the vorticity. So um, apparently the major pattern uh, here uh, over this uh, ocean uh, ocean area is the mesoscale eddy. Now this is one observation I will show you. Uh, the two curves are integrated kinetic energy and integrated uh, entropy properly scaled together. And the surprising fact is this very strong correlation. So the area of integration is this offshore region uh, denoted here uh, by this uh, dashed line on the map. So the correlation coefficient is, uh, the Pearson correlation is uh, 0.95. Uh, if we incorporate uh, the sh shoreline region, so close to the, close to the shore, then uh, the strong correlation uh, disappears. 
So it means that uh, the, the integration area, so this relationship uh, um, should be uh, considered over open, open sea area um, for, uh, far enough uh, from, from the shorelines. So in order to check which is the minimal area where these correlations uh, so nicely exist, uh, we made the sliced uh, analysis. Uh, so first, uh, here in the middle of the region, uh, these increasing area of uh, squares indicate the, 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 the different um, uh, region of integration, and also it is not indicated, but uh, we made uh, the same correlation analysis uh, with integrated kinetic energy and uh, integrated entropy in vertical slices, in uh, vertical stripes uh, of width of one uh, degree and uh, of width of two degrees. And here is the major result of this uh, sliced analysis. So on the top panel, what we see is the blue dots represent the Pearson correlation as a function of the increasing area, starting from the middle. Now the correlation is calculated over the total uh, time interval, so over the total 8,000 something days. And what you see here, that, uh, and it's an easy check, that none of the individual uh, uh, grid points uh, exhibit correlation between the entropy and uh, kinetic energy spatial integration is uh, necessary. So when, uh, wh when the range uh, of the integration increases gradually, then the correlation increases as well. And at around 25,000 square kilometer, so which is uh, something like five times five uh, geographic degrees, uh, then this correlation saturates and, uh, and reaches this very high level. Meanwhile, these, these symbols belong uh, uh, to the tests uh, in different uh, meridional bands. Uh, this is uh, the little crosses is one degree meridional bands and, uh, and the black is two. So the, the two degree meridional band sometimes can have, uh, similarly to the, to the one degree band, can, can have smaller area of integration because these, these bands are just uh, shorter. You see here is just below the shoreline. And uh, what is remarkable here, that the distribution of these correlations is not random. These distributions, uh, uh, what this distribution is characterized by the distance from the shoreline. So the farther we are from the, from the shore, uh, the higher is the correlation in, in, in these vertical bands. And uh, this is true both for the one degree bands and for the, for the two degree bands. This simple relationship uh, defines an effective radius of uh, this hypothetical supervortex, a Gaussian supervortex, and uh, you see here also the quick convergence of, uh, of this characteristic value. Uh, it is around uh, 50 kilometer. But uh, uh, I would like to note that uh, this, uh, uh, this 50 kilometer is uh, not the usual size of uh, detected uh, of the detected eddies, uh, sorry, automatically detected eddies, because uh, what you see here is uh, the fitted parameter, so this effective radius is only the one sigma width of a, of a Gaussian peak. So if we compare with these uh, observations, as so a close contour line, size, then uh, you see here that is, uh, uh, this, uh, when we really imagine such a, uh, such a hypothetical super vortex, then uh, it is uh, two times this effective R or uh, even, even more three times, th three times the effective radius, effective fitted radius, which can, can be compared with an existing Um, existing geostrophic vortex. 
The third parameter is the, uh, is the effective amplitude, which can be evaluated uh, from the kinetic energy integral. Uh, so here, the parameters are simply the geometry, it's a pi, the um, uh, acceleration, and the Coriolis parameter, depending on the latitude. And here, the large error bars uh, are the consequences of the strong uh, temporal fluctuation of the, of the signal. Uh, so it's the next step is to evaluate this uh, temporal evolution. Uh, and then uh, what we see here is, uh, is uh, a ratio, and uh, I, will, I will comment it later, what is the interpretation of this, uh, of this eta parameter. Now, of course, the, the, the eta parameter uh, must be normalized uh, by something uh, to have a comparison, because if we increase the area of uh, integration, then this uh, eta parameter is monotonously increasing, obviously. So, so it's a quiet, straightforward normalization parameter is the linear size of the area of integration. And actually, uh, to correct uh, the differences between the shapes, because it, uh, in a square, it's uh, simply this uh, normalization parameter is the width of the square, but what about this vertical Line, so then uh, well, the, this normalization parameter was the square root of the area. Vortex tracking, it's uh, another uh, interesting uh, um, part of this, uh, is, is this comparison with the, with the vortex sensor. So what you see here is trajectories uh, of uh, long living edges, uh, uh, long living uh, eddies. So here the ed eddy age was o over 30 weeks, and in the bottom panel is uh, over 15 weeks. So these are really long living edding. What you see here is the van on fact that the characteristic motion of these eddies is, uh, is a westward drift. They are monotonously shifting to the west. The method of this uh, tracking and vortex sensors was also, also this uh, close contour uh, sea level anomaly, so this uh, Cherton methodology. So here, is, uh, uh, here are the results of, uh, of this uh, vortex sensors compared with the, with the estimates. Uh, so for a proper interpretation of this uh, effective fitted radius of a super vortex. So these are, uh, these are different uh, empirical distribution densities. The vertical scale is logarithmic and it's, uh, uh, the, the, the shape is very similar to what one can find in the literature about similar vortex sensors. Uh, one remark is that uh, the distribution depends on the resolution of the closed contour searching uh, algorithm. Uh, so the level spacing, when it is uh, really fine, it's only one millimeter. Then uh, uh, what you see here is the number of small eddies uh, uh, um, observed increases, and uh, the, the price is that large eddies uh, are identified uh, in a lower number. Uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is the amplitude of the eddies. Uh, th this, is, this is just, a, of course, this, this zero value is, uh, is just a graphical uh, error. So the, so the minimal amplitude of an eddy, which was considered is 1.5 centimeter in these uh, statistics. So let us co uh, uh, compare these uh, effective uh, fitted uh, super vortex radius with the uh, empirical counts at uh, different bands in this case. So you see here that these are the, the meridional bands of one degree and then two degree. <coughs> and then accordingly, the, the integrate, uh, um, um, uh, the array of integration and uh, here, the explanatory variable on the horizontal axis is the distance from the shoreline. So there are some characteristic dependence. So first of all, the fitted uh, size parameter, this effective radius, agrees pretty well with the mean value of the vortex uh, 
characteristic sizes identified uh, by the vortex sensors. And uh, also it shows that uh, the, uh, there is a kind of uh, increase, but uh, this, this tendency, uh, um, I, I wouldn't say that it's, uh, it's a real tendency because of these uh, large uh, amplitude uh, of the error bars. So the large amplitude of the fluctuations. Instead of uh, comparing the eddy amplitudes with this fitted uh, eta parameter, with this effective parameter, uh, what we compared is uh, the square of this one, because the, the square of this amplitude is directly related to the kinetic energy. And then we compare this with the square, the, the total sum of the squared amplitude of the identi uh, uh, identified uh, eddies. And then what we found, it's a pretty good agreement, also the, the tendency uh, as a function of the distance from the shore uh, matches very well. When we implement here a prefactor of two, so this means that uh, in terms of the kinetic energy, then this direct integration, the direct integration of the kinetic energy gives a factor of two higher value when we compare this with the total kinetic energy of the identified eddies, individual eddies. Uh, so this means that, uh, that these, these eddies located uh, by the traditional method represent only half of the kinetic energy uh, of, the, of the flow field compared to, uh, compared to the total, uh, total uh, integrated value. Here is a quick demonstration how can we use this uh, effective picture of integrated kinetic energy to obtain this uh, westward drift speed, for example. The blue uh, and the uh, red uh, eddies uh, and, and the drift velocity is determined by this uh, tracking procedure. So by evaluating individual tracks, and that gives this uh, statistics. Also, the result is in complete agreement with the known value of around uh, three, um, um, three centimeter per second for these eddies. And then the last one is uh, simply obtained by uh, determining the cross-correlation time between the time uh, series of kin integrated kinetic energy uh, between the neighboring meridional bands. So, uh, so this, uh, th this is a little overestimate here. What you see here is a, qu a quant quantization effect. Here, this is the stepwise difference, but uh, basically, uh, the value, well, what we got is uh, um, in agreement again with the individual and the census. Basically, this indicates that this cross-correlation uh, comparison works. This indicates that the changes at a given particular area, in a restricted area, the, the changes of the kinetic energy as entropy, the ma major mechanism is uh, advection. So uh, kinetic energy and entropy is not generated over the open, open ocean. So in a restricted area, what one can observe is uh, simply the advection. Eddies are coming and going, and uh, they are delivering the kinetic energy and the entropy. But this is only one part, so, so we tested uh, this picture from a completely different uh, area. Uh, so that is a flow field around Madagascar. It's a, it's a, a pretty short but a recent database uh, in the Aviso. Uh, 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 over this uh, region, the temporal resolution is one day, so daily uh, sea level anomalies and the geotrophic velocity components. Uh, and the aim was uh, uh, to exploit the fact uh, that this is a, a short and uh, short time database, but the native resolution is uh, uh, one eighth of a, a geographic degree. 
uh, and uh, uh, this particular area is uh, chosen as a, uh, a kind of uh, a lucky situation because uh, so many uh, satellites are crossing uh, this area that uh, after appropriate blending, the native observed resolution is this one. So it's no mathematical uh, extrapolation, whatever, which provides uh, this uh, high extrapolation. Uh, here, what, uh, what we see is it's also very complicated uh, from the point of view of background currents. Uh, sometimes this, this current in this Mozambique channel is a really strong one, and uh, also it depends uh, on the season, so very, very strong seasonality. And uh, here is one picture of the sea level anomaly field. And uh, now uh, the indication that the top edge of this area is the equator is uh, really clear. So th th this is partly what you asked, that the interesting fact is that you see here that uh, the Coriolis parameter disappearing when we are going to the equator and uh, also the amplitude of the vortices are, are disappearing, so fading out as we are expecting. But still, you see here the vortical structures. Uh, the, these, are, these are streamlines. And then uh, the, the dots indicating uh, the center of uh, identified eddies by this traditional method. It's an interesting fact that uh, when we determine the mean value the spatial mean value over the total area as a function of time, uh, then uh, th this was our surprise that uh, th this is everywhere positive and it is fluctuating from uh, 5 centimeter to uh, 12 centimeter and it has a monotonously increasing trend during these two years. That, that we don't know what is the reason of that because we did not expect. But uh, during the, the vortex census, we corrected. Uh, so it, it, in every given sea level anomaly value, we uh, removed this uh, global mean because we don't understand what is the shift. It is certainly not the, not the global climate change because what we expect from that is three millimeter per year. And this is a two, year, two and a half year period only. And then uh, you see here, uh, it's uh, almost five centimeter, the drift. Anyhow, when we determine, this is the first rough check, when we determine the relationship between this uh, integrated kinetic energy and integrated vorticity, then again what we see is a pretty strong temporal correlation. Not so strong than in the case of the open, open uh, ocean region, because in this integration every, uh, uh, every site is uh, incorporated. But we know that uh, the very strong interaction uh, between the topographic features close to the shoreline and the background flow and the vortices destroy this relationship. So we, uh, we tested this relationship over these two cut, cutouts, uh, 10 by 10 uh, geographic degrees. One is very close to the equator and uh, the other is away from that. And here is the result. The top paddle shows the Pearson correlation, again, as a function of the increasing area of integration from the center outward, similarly to the previous check. And then the red curve uh, represents the, uh, the upper area, and the blue curve represents the bottom area here, these, these, these yellow squares. Uh, you see here that, that that is the curvature, so when we consider the area of integration, uh, we consider the curvature effect. So actually, the, uh, so 10 by 10 degrees close to the equator uh, is larger by 10,000 kilometers than here, away from the, from the equator. Uh, the interesting fact is that uh, we see here again that uh, at around uh, 20,000, 25,000, 30,000 kilometer, it, it, uh, the, the correlation seems to be saturated here, away from the 
equator, uh, but uh, interestingly, uh, it has a decaying tendency close to the, close to the equator. As for the fitted uh, effective radius, so the size parameter of this super vortex coming, coming from this uh, uh, ratio from the integrated uh, R square, uh, from, uh, sorry, from integrated kinetic energy and in integrated enthalpy, uh, the comparison shows that, uh, uh, again, the, the, this is something at around 50 kilometer, so it's consistent with, uh, with the size obtained before with a completely different ocean area, area. and uh, the tendency is the opposite. Uh, so at larger and larger integration area results in an increasing estimate for the size parameter close to the equator and uh, a slightly decreasing one when you are away. And uh, here is the evaluated amplitude parameter from the integrated kinetic energy. And uh, now the, the difference here is really marked. So the bottom curve shows that the amplitudes are much smaller close to the equator as is directly seen. And uh, large amplitude uh, eddy activity is characteristic when we are far enough and uh, we have a large enough Coriolis parameter. Uh, so these are not swimming sperms. Uh, there's eddy tracks, and uh, the, this area uh, is characterized by short-living uh, eddies. Uh, uh, you see here that uh, mm, when the limit of the age limit is uh, five weeks, then the number of, uh, uh, of representative eddies are disappearing. Probably this is the consequence of this very strong interaction between the background flow, the very strong interaction between the shoreline, so the bottom uh, roughness, and then also the strong interaction between the eddies. But the tendency is clear. So, so these eddies are arriving from the open ocean. So the western drift is characteristic even so close to the uh, uh, African shorelines and uh, Madagascar. And uh, Uh, sometimes you see the effect that uh, in, this, uh, in this strong current in the Mozambique Channel can advect uh, these mesoscale, mesoscale eddies as well. This, this is the last uh, slide, uh, last slide about uh, these uh, empirical results. Uh, uh, again, something we, we should think about that because uh, surprisingly, the, uh, mm, the statistics uh, seem to uh, seem to work. Oops! Oh, the, the, these are just uh, sorry. Uh, so, so this. Uh, these two panel belongs to the close to the equator situation, and this is at the bottom. So sur uh, surprisingly, uh, the size estimate compared with the direct size statistics uh, of the individual eddies, uh, it pretty pretty much agrees with the previous results. Uh, surprisingly, close to the equator. So here, what you see is this narrow distribution of the estimated effective radius is very close to the empirical mean value of this uh, distribution function. And then uh, when we are away, then what we see here is some uh, deviations, so we, we should think about it. What, is the, what is the reason. Probably the, uh, the reason is that here, the shoreline is too close. And as I mentioned, the, the, this kind of uh, correlation decays uh, when, when this is a turbulent region and uh, when we are when we are extend the analysis so close to the shore compared to this open open region, then uh, this uh, spoils the statistics. And also, the the obtained uh, deviations can be understand uh, by considering these results. Uh, it's also a recent one uh, because they obtained that the characteristic distribution of at the radius, at the amplitude, at the lifetime, whatever. But uh, for for our point of view. The, the geometry is the in focus, 
uh, is very strongly depend on the te uh, of the spatial resolution of the uh, of the velocity field and on the eddy field. Uh, so the uh, higher the resolution, uh, such high resolution can be obtained only by um, numerical simulations and not direct observations. But uh, what you see here that uh, is definitely uh, at higher resolution, the uh, number of small size eddies increases compared to the large scale coherent structures. Here, this is the, the very last one uh, from this quoted work. Uh, what I would like to show here, uh, uh, that is the analysis. They compare directly the eddy kinetic energy the ratio inside the eddies and uh, in the outside region. And they obtained also a ratio of something like highly fluctuating between 1 and 5, but the mean value is around 2. This is uh, also in agreement with our direct estimate with a much, much simpler methodology. So um, I will stop here, and that is the conclusion that at the moment uh, uh, this proxy seems to work. So we would like to extend our analysis globally. So uh, using the full Aviso uh, database and then see what, what comes out. Uh, but we believe that after these uh, two uh, calibration uh, region that uh, it is uh, pretty promising. So thank you very much for your kind patience. Thank you very much. Sorry for using this. I, in the break, I was asked to use the microphone during the discussion. So let us try. Any questions? So I'm still curious about the size, because I mean, you're, you're seeing about the same size vortices at 6 south, I guess, or 4 south, and, or 20, and 24 south. Is that right? So both of them are, you're getting a radius around 50 kilometers. Yeah, 6 and 24. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so they're about the same size. But the deformation radius is about a factor of four different between those two. So are these not deformation scale vortices? Or why, why, why are they so similar, do you know? No, apparently not. But, uh, but also again, so this, uh, this I mentioned that uh, these, these effective size parameter, uh, when we are really considering the geometry, is uh, you see here, it is, only the, it is only the one sigma height. So the, if, if, for example, we are identifying such a, such a Gaussian vortex as a closed uh, sea level anomaly contour around zero, then uh, the real geometric extent is three times higher than this fitted parameter here. But that would still be true at both latitudes, though, right? That would, that would still be true at both latitudes. So I'm just wondering. So, I mean, you could, if you compare R at the two latitudes or 2R or whatever, you know, but the, the, you still have the fact that the deformation radius is a factor of, it's almost four between those two. So I'm just wondering why that doesn't, that doesn't show up. You can kind of see it too when you look at a, you know, you look at the Aviso product, and you see you have very large structures that propagate near the equator, and then they get smaller as you move away from the equator too. Uh, um, what I, okay, so here are here are the empirical size distribution. Hmm. Th these are the eddy scales away from the equator. So the, the maximum size which was observed is only 80 kilometer. And, and the mean is uh, 35. And close to the equator uh, is 130, 140. This is the maximum, and the mean is around 60. Mm. These are the empirical observations. Mm. 